Hello, East Angels. Uh, we are coming to you, Ms. Bemke and Mr. Kohuth, to share information about NCAA. Um, we are not going to be including all information on NCAA, but we are going to be giving you a few important steps um, that you need to be thinking of. Uh, we're gonna be talking about things that you should have done last year as a junior, and then looking at what your tasks are for this year. And we're posting that because if you haven't yet done the junior year tasks, then now's the time, right? Like, let's get it rolling. We're gonna be talking about the different kinds of NCAA student accounts. Um, it's an important distinction that we wanna make sure that you are aware of. Uh, we'll be going over the academic requirements, and we're only going D1 and D2 because for D3, there are no academic requirements. The requirement is that you're able to get into that college or university. So we're not going to go into that specifically. We know you're all wondering, as were we, uh, kind of how is COVID-19 affecting the NCAA requirements and grading policy? So we will go through that. Um, we have their latest update and we anticipate that more will be coming throughout the year. And then we're gonna get in student tasks, like what you need to have done or make sure you are doing, how to reach out to us. We'll go through um, some resources. Um, this is a student owned process. We are here to support, but you are your number one advocate and you are the one that is here to make sure that everything is done on your end so that we can support on our end. So we have some resources then we have some counselor contacts at the end. Okay. So as a junior, there's several things that you should probably be doing. If you're a senior and you're like, wait a minute, I didn't do these things. We'll, we'll get to you in a second. If you're a junior, first thing you need to do is please make sure you're talking to your counselor. Make sure you're on track to graduate. Make sure that you are taking NCAA approved courses. Make sure you're, you're talking to your, to your counselor, making sure you're going to graduate on time. Those are important things. Take the ACT or SAT. It's a little crazy right now. I know, realize a lot of people are scrambling to figure out how this testing is going to work. Ms. Bemke is going to be talking about that in a few minutes uh, with the COVID stuff. If you're able to get an ACT or SAT um, testing, make sure that you send your results to the NCAA using the code 9999. If I remember correctly, those are in the instructions when you take the ACT or SAT, but you know, please make sure you send your scores directly. Please make sure that your sports participation information is correct in your eligibility account. We'll talk about that in a couple minutes. Then at the end of the school year, have your counselor send your, your upload your transcripts to the NCAA eligibility center. So at the end of your junior year, that's the first time we send your transcripts off. So seniors, what you need to be doing is you need to make sure that you are taking the right classes and that all your classes that you're taking are NCAA approved. Who should you talk to about that? Correct answer is your counselor. Make sure you're checking with your counselor, taking the right classes. Testing. If you weren't happy with your score before, which nobody is because nobody's taken it, see if you can find a testing. Again, Ms. Bemke will be talking more about some of the testing stuff and some of the COVID things that are going on. If you're able to find um, a test, um, sign up for it and make sure you, and you send your results to the NCAA using 9999. Here's something kind of different that people don't usually think about you need to fill out your final amateurism certi certification in your certification account. And you'll log, you can't do that until, ac until after April 1st. Again, check with your counselor, check with Ms. Bemke. Uh, we'll get you more information about that. But you do need to make sure that you fill out your amateurism report. Once you have graduated, your counselor will send your final transcripts to the NCAA. Make sure that you request that. That's on one of the senior checkout things. It's on there. Make sure that we know that you need to send your final transcripts to NCAA. Um, that should be that for your senior year. 
Now, there are a couple different types of accounts. Now, this causes some confusion. Because there's the, the, the account that most people are familiar with is the second one on here, the certification account. I'm going to talk about that one first. If you are interested in competing D1 or D2, you need to make sure you fill out the certification account. So you go to NCAA eligibility center.org. That is the standard one. There's the fee, all, all those things. You're filling out your certification account. If you think you're just going to do D3, um, or if you're not sure which division you want to compete in, you can create a profile page. But when you create a profile page, it does not automatically create a certification page. So if you fill out the profile page and you're like, oh my gosh, these D1 schools are contacting me, you need to go back into the eligibility center and make sure that you fill out a certification account. Um, otherwise, we are not able to submit your transcripts um, to the NCAA because you won't have the right type of account. So again, if you need more information, details about that, come find either myself or Ms. Bemke. But pay attention to the type of, of account that you're setting up at NCAA eligibility center.org. It's like a tongue twister, right? <laughs> okay. So then we're going to go into um, our academic requirements. And again, we're only going to really talk about D1 and D2. Like I said before, um, this is really a student driven process. So I want you to jump online. There are tons of resources. Um, on the NCAA website at eligibilitycenter.org. Uh, it will give you so much information and really break this down in really nice and clear ways. Um, and then there are different types of qualifiers. What I've posted here is just the full qualifiers, even though you can't see it because our faces are in the way. Um, but I've only posted full qualifiers because this is the highest um, academic requirement. And if you meet this, your full qualifier. If you don't quite, um, then you might be uh, an academic red shirt or a non-qualifier, but that's where we really need you to familiarize yourself with that process. To be a full qualifier for NCAA Division I, you need to, by the end of high school, complete 16 core courses. However, 10 of those core courses need to be completed before you begin senior year. They will say before you begin your seventh semester, okay? So it includes summer school if you did summer school. Uh, seven of those 10 courses need to be in English, math, and natural physical science. So if you have followed uh, what EAST recommends in terms of your core academics and passed those classes with, I would say, a B or higher, you're pretty much set. Um, so again, 16 courses by the end of high school, 10 by the end of junior year or before your seventh semester. And they need to have a core GPA of a 2.3. So that's just over a C. Um, again, actually not again, but English, math, science, social studies, and world language all count for your core courses. So again, if you're following kind of the typical East process, you're gonna, you're gonna hit those numbers. Um, the other requirement is, two other requirements are that you need to earn the SAT combined score or the ACT sum score matching the core GPA on the Division I sliding scale. Um, again, you're going to need to jump on the NCAA website. You're going to need to look at what those academic requirements are. Um, that sliding scale is posted with all of those little cheat sheets that they have, and they have a lot. They have a lot of great resources. So take a look at that. If you have not yet taken the test, hang in there. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. And finally, you need to graduate high school. Should go without saying, but um, they say it. So we're gonna post it. Uh, you need to make sure that you graduate with all of these requirements. If you do this, you'll be a full qualifier, okay? If you want to look into academic red shirt information, please jump online. Division two requirements are a little just a little bit less in terms of GPA so you have 16 core courses they do not um, necessarily have the same uh, breakdown and we'll show you that in a minute uh, GPA again is a 2.2 they have the same sliding scale it's an adjusted sliding scale for D2 
And then ironically, you still need to graduate from high school. Oh, no. Oh, shoot. Mm -hmm. I don't even okay. If, when you graduate from college, you will be able to visit beautiful places like that island in the, in the middle of the ocean. Oh wait. Oh, you can just blame 2020 because that does seem to be the way it's rolling. I am blaming 2020. Welcome back, kids. This is our first Zoom recording ever. So welcome. <laughs> can you tell? Right. No kidding. So um, we're going to just jump forward like that never happened. Uh, so here are the breakdowns by course for the academic requirements. So you can see um, Division Two still has the 16 core course total, but the breakdown can be different, right? They give you more flexibility, whereas division one is a little bit more regimented, a little bit more stringent in terms of where they are expecting you to meet those requirements, okay? And again, here it says you have to do these 10, or D1, seven of those 10 are in English, math, or science before your seventh semester. So you've already done that, right? I know you have. All right, moving right along. So COVID, right? Um, it, it's hit us and it has derailed just about every system in this country, right? So for NCAA, for class of 2021 and beyond, okay? Things are a little bit different for class of 2020, but that's not you. Uh, so for 2021 and beyond, um, they still are requiring that SAT or ACT score, that sliding scale, for certification purposes for D1 and D2. Now, I don't want you to freak out. I don't want you to worry. They have made it very clear that they are going to continue to monitor the situation. They could not make a blanket statement back in May of 2020 of what this would look like for the graduates of 2021. Okay, so I just want you to just take a deep breath. We know that these tests are being offered and scheduled and canceled. And so NCAA is aware of that too. All right, so at this point, you're going to need to try to sign up for an SAT or ACT if you've not yet done it. And then you're going to have to roll with the punches with that a little bit. If it gets canceled, you're going to reschedule for the next available test. Um, if nothing else, then you'll have documentation to share with NCAA, like, look, I'm trying to do this and I can't get in for a test. And we are happy to advocate with you on that as well. But it is at this point for the class of 2020, 2021 and beyond, it is a requirement to have that score. The same academic requirements still are in play. There's been no change for that. We're gonna talk about GPA in just a minute, but those 16 core requirements are still in play. You still need to, they still require proof of graduation, which I just think is humorous, because if you're going to college, you're gonna to need to graduate. Um, and they still need your transcript submitted. So we need to send these, it's before the seventh semester, right? So we need it sent now so that they can see where you are at for your first three years of school. You will then again send your official transcript after your senior year. And Mr. Koth has already mentioned this, but they need those twice, kind of so they know if you're eligible for with those 10 requirements after junior year and then with the 16 after senior year. Again, they will continue to evaluate the COVID situation. Um, I think this is an important time to figure out like what do we have control over and what, what don't we? We don't have control over that situation. You do have control over scheduling your test. You do have control over making sure you're taking the appropriate classes and making the grades that you need to make. You also have control over sending your transcripts. So those are things that we need you guys to do. All right, the grading adjust adjustment. So NCAA has a hold harmless policy, meaning they don't want you to be penalized for what has happened during this time, all right? Um, so if you took any classes, which you did, 
if you took any classes during spring 2020 or summer 2020, you had the option to post them for credit. So this is either a P for pass or in, in DPS, it posts to your transcript as a CR for credit, okay? So if that is on your transcript for an approved core course, it will, it will be calculated into your GPA. However, again, it's in that hold harmless framework. So it will not be, typically a P is calculated into a GPA like a D would be, but they're not going to do that. So if you have a CR or credit, it will post to their GPA calculation as a 2.3. You know for D4, you know for D1, you need a 2.3 core GPA. So they're saying, listen, we'll give you that 2.3 for the credit that you've earned. We're not going to give you the credit that you would earn for a D. We're gonna give you that 2.3. So we're gonna, that, that'll be held harmless. And that's only if it helps increase your core GPA. So if you have been a straight A student and you have a credit, a CR posted for one of your classes, NCAA will count that class, but they will not give you the 2.3 because it'll actually bring your core GPA down. Okay, so that's what that next one says. So the credit will not be calculated into the GPA if it will bring the student's core GPA down the course will still count towards your required number of core courses. So it can still count as one of your 16. All right. So basically, if you took a credit, that's going to count as a 2.3 unless it's going to pull down your core GPA. And that makes a difference for the sliding scale. So really, again, they're trying to support you and trying to give you every opportunity to get that 2.3 minimum core GPA. If you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to myself or Mr. Kobu. And then we have kind of things that you need to make sure to do. And like Ms. Bemke just said, the, the first most important thing that you need to make sure is that you're communicating. Talk to your counselor. Make sure your counselor realizes that you want to be an NCAA athlete. Um, and, and that's, that's the most important thing. If nobody knows, then we, we can't help you. You know, along with that, make sure that you are on track to meet all your core academic requirements and that you are on track to graduate. Fortunately, the way DPS sets up our graduation requirements is if you are on track to graduate, you are meeting your core academic requirements as long as you have the right grades. Make sure you're looking for and signing up for, a, for an SAT or ACT administration. If you can't find one, you know, don't, don't let that absolutely freak you out. Or if you see one, but you are really concerned that you don't want to either travel to that area or you're a little worried about sitting with 100 other kids in that room to take it, again, don't let that worry you. Like Ms. Bemke said before, we will advocate for you. We will support you in that decision. You need to make sure that you are doing what you know is best for you. You need to make sure you're going to eligibilitycenter.org. You need to know these things. It is up to you to make sure that you're doing all the steps that you've created the right accounts. We are not here to do this for you. You're going to be a, an NCAA athlete. You've got to be able to take care of business. Please make sure you're, you've created, especially you want to be D1, D2, that you've created a certification account and that you're checking your dashboard to make sure that you're doing all the things that they need you to do. Um, if you need a fee waiver for your certification account, please make sure you're talking to your counselor. We, we are able to help with that. Your official transcripts should have been sent, well, if you're a junior or if you're no, if you're a senior right now, your transcripts should have been sent after summer school. If they weren't, I'm guessing you probably didn't let anybody know that they needed to be sent. Find a counselor, make sure that we are sending your uh, final transcripts at the beginning of your junior year. And then after April 1st, make sure you fill out your final amateurism certification. Most important, make sure you're talking to your counselor. Make sure you're checking your dashboard. It tells you what you need to do. 
make sure you're logging in, make sure you're checking stuff, make sure you're doing what you need to do and taking care of business. And just to piggyback on that, for those of you that have had your senior meetings, um, your counselor shared with you the senior appointments class of 2020 Google Doc, which is a mouthful, but there is a link on there to request a transcript to be sent to NCAA. That's the best way to do it. If you just click on that, that generates a form that kicks right to me, and then I just upload your transcript and it is done. I try to email the student right back to let them know, hey, you sent in this form, I've sent your transcript. Um, if I have problems, then I reach out to you directly and I link in your counselor so that they know like, hey, this isn't working for some reason. Um, but that's a great way to just make sure your stuff is getting sent and I, I get it off my plate pretty quickly. Okay. So some important resources, like we keep saying, you need to know what's going on. Um, go to eligibilitycenter.org. Eligibility there is so much information. Everything you need is there. Make sure you're going back. Make sure you're checking, checking in. Make sure you're, you're looking at I mean, you're looking at um, all the things that you need to see. Go to eligibilitycenter.org course list. If you want to see the full list of NCAA core academic classes, do your classes qualify? You need to know. Um, you can ask us, but it you know makes you can look things up for yourself as well. NCAA.org/test scores. More information on the 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 initial eligibility requirements, and it has all the different sliding scales. Nationalletter.org, where you can learn about the rules about recruiting and national letter of intent stuff. And then if you want to get the best, most recent updated information on to the testing situation, go to their websites, collegeboard.org for the SAT and actstudent.org for the ACT. That is where the newest updates are. If you want to know if something's being offered, that's where you find out. So again, make sure that you are educating yourself on what you need. Um, you know, we are here as a resource as well, but you know, you've got to make sure you're taking care of business. Exactly, and I just want to point out for the course list here, um, what often trips students up is that they don't communicate with the counselors that they want to play NCAA sports, D1 or D2. So then our eyes are not necessarily on your courses because we don't know that it's an issue for you right so we schedule you in courses that you will you know that will benefit you you will graduate you will qualify to go on to college or whatever trading school whatever you're interested in but there are a few courses here and there that are not ncaa approved if we don't know that you're ncaa if you are you know aspiring to be ncaa athlete that might get in your way so for example, like film is literature, we know is not NCAA approved. One of my seniors asked for that. I knew that kid was interested in being an NCAA athlete, so we didn't put in a schedule. If we hadn't had that conversation previously, I would have put that kid in the schedule. Now that kid no longer qualifies for D1, right? So make sure you're communicating with us and make sure you're checking out your classes so that we're all on the same page that you will qualify as you move through the process. If you have follow-up questions, please reach out to Mr. Kohuth or my name is covered by our faces. So I am Becky Bemke. Um, that's my email right there. You are welcome to reach out to the two of us, but also just reach out to your counselor. And just, I mean, you can reach out to them, maybe not in August, but soon. Um, and just say, you know, I'm, I want to be an NCAA athlete, these are the courses I've taken. I looked at the I looked at NCAA. It looks like they're all NCAA eligible. Could you take a look? Um, I mean, we are happy to talk to you about these things. I will tell you though, at that point, I am not going to calculate your core GPA. I'm going to say, hey, let's submit this to NCAA and let them take it from there to do your calculation. They always look in the best interest of the student. They are not trying to restrict you from meeting their requirements. They are trying to figure out the best way how to get you to that 2.3 or how to get you to the high, highest GPA possible. So they really are here and working on your behalf. 
Anything else, Kohuth? Not that I can think of. Most importantly, make sure that you are logging in, make sure you're creating your account, and make sure that you are, are keeping track of what you need to be doing and communicate. That's what we're here for. We can't help you if we don't know what you want to do. Make sure you communicate with us. Make sure you're, you're learning what you need to learn. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thanks for joining us, Angels. We look forward to speaking to you. If you have any questions, thanks for your patience with our Zoom recording. Um, best of luck. And when you are an NCAA athlete, um, feel free to put Kohoot's name or my name on your list and we'll come watch you play. You know, if you're in the Tri-County area. All right. Well, I'll travel. I'll go, I'll, I'll go anywhere. You'll travel? We'll yep. travel for tickets. <laughs> yes. All right. Thanks, guys. Best of luck. Yep.